for the celebration of the Eucharist. Welcome to those of you who have joined us from home this morning. Our celebrant is Father Noel, and we remember in a special way at this Mass, Kathleen and Charles Carr. Please join me in our entrance antiphon. Let us sing to the Lord, for he has gloriously triumphed. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist. We begin in God's name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. And as I welcome you, I welcome those who have joined us online from their homes this morning. We come mindful of God's love, God's forgiveness, and so we pause and call to mind our sins. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Well, let us pray. O God, by whose grace, though sinners we are made just, and though pitiable made blessed, stand, we pray, by your works, stand by your gifts, that those justified by faith may not lack courage or perseverance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After much debate had taken place, Peter got up and said to the apostles and the presbyters, My brothers, you are well aware that from early days God made his choice among you that through my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness by granting them the Holy Spirit just as he did us. He made no distinction between us and them, for by faith he purified their hearts. Why then are you putting God to the test by placing on the shoulders of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they. The whole assembly fell silent, and they listened while Paul and Barnabas described the signs and wonders God had worked among the Gentiles through them. After they had fallen silent, James responded, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has described how God first concerned himself while acquiring from among the Gentiles the people for his name. The words of the prophet agree with this, as is written. After this I shall return and rebuild the fallen hut of David. From its ruins I shall rebuild it and raise it up again, so that the rest of humanity may seek out the Lord even all the Gentiles on whom my name is invoked. Thus says the Lord who accomplishes these things known from of old. It is my judgment, therefore, that we ought to stop troubling the Gentiles who turn to God, but tell them by letter to avoid pollution from idols, unlawful marriage, the meat of strangled animals, and blood. For Moses, for generations now, has had those who proclaim him in every town as he had heard in the synagogues every Sabbath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial song. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all your lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. 
He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all nations. in his life. 
He suffered pain, the intense suffering of the journey to the cross. All that was challenging, tough physical pain, and people rejecting him along the way, as indeed they had done through those three years. In particular, people like those in the first reading today, the Acts of the Apostles. Because as I always say, remind us all, and priests and deacons always at this time of the year after Easter, we listen to the Acts of the Apostles and we're reminded of the early Christian church and how it grew, what was happening, and how, who were the agents of change and transformation, and what was it that motivated them? It was Jesus Christ, because they were living very close. Some had witnessed Jesus, known him, others heard all about him and what he had done in people's lives. And so that first reading today, what's happening, it's a key historical moment in the history of our church, the history of Christianity, because what is it? It's the very first council in the church. The Council of Jerusalem. We heard yesterday that Paul and Barnabas, they were concerned as to how the people who had joined or become Christian, wanting to become Christian, but they were holding on to parts of their culture, their traditions and laws and rules that were too much of a burden really that were being placed on people's shoulders, that Jesus himself, when he confronted the Pharisees, when he said to them, you are weighing putting heavy burdens on people's lives, how can they ever fulfill them or achieve them? And we think of the commandments that Jesus refers to today in the Gospel, and then we think of the Old Testament, and what have they done? The Pharisees, they had interpreted them, those ten commandments, into 613 laws and you had to observe them all or you weren't a good Jewish person and so what had happened why did Paul and Barnabas go to Jerusalem because they were aware of all these new converts the Greeks the Romans as well as Jewish people that were coming into the faith and those people, the Jews, were trying to impose heavy burdens upon the Greeks, the Romans, the converts, the Gentiles. And so if we heard yesterday what today's Gospel speaks of, that on their way they stopped along the way of other Christian communities on their way to Jerusalem, and they shared about what was happening in these new Christian communities where the Greeks and the Romans were joining and what was happening in the transformation there in those communities with these Gentiles and it brought joy to those communities. The joy that Jesus is referring to and Peter is who we hear about in the beginning of the Apostles today. Peter got up and said to the Apostles and the Presbyters so why did Peter stand up after the debate? Because he was the first Pope. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And so here we see Peter in his role as leader of the church at the council in Jerusalem, saying, after much debate, we've heard what Paul and Barnabas are worried about, these heavy rules and regulations that they're imposing upon these Gentile converts. We heard yesterday in particular that which was disgusting to these new converts, that of circumcision and other things as well. But in particular yesterday in the scripture it was circumcision necessary to become a Christian. And so now Peter says, after all this the people fell silent, they reflected and then he said, it is my judgment that we ought to stop troubling the Gentiles who turn to God. But, yes, we need to remind them what is important and what is it that they need to let go of. And that is unwelcome marriage, pollution from idols, to avoid the pollution, the meat of strangled animals and blood. And how does he do it? 
And that's where we see the diplomacy of Peter at this time. Nobody's going to go there and with a very harsh, condemnatory, judgmental voice is going to say, the council in Jerusalem has said, we hear next, it was that they, we ought, we should tell them by sending them a letter, by writing, writing to them. And so, putting on paper what needed to be said. So they had to read, reflect upon, and realize this is what is needed of us. And what is it that for them was important, and for Jesus that was important? It was the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments all rolled into one. You shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and your neighbour as yourself. And so we know that those commandments are there for a particular reason, to guide us, to direct us, so that we can live joy-filled lives, so that there be no more chaos inside or outside in our daily living. Can you imagine all those who profess to be Christian, just those Christians in the world, were to take seriously the Ten Commandments and put them into action every day? Then the inner peace that one would have oneself, because joy would be within your heart, because you know you are living what Jesus asks, and Jesus himself lived what the Father asked and what the Father granted to him, and that was love, because he says, Remain in my love, as the Father loves me, Jesus, so I love you. So just imagine that intense, profound love between the Father and the Son, and that the Son, his desire is to have that same relationship with each of us here today. That that love flowing from the Father to Jesus is flowing out to every one of us here this day. That's why we need to reflect on how I began. A little word, three letters, J O Y. And if it's lacking in our lives, then maybe we need to examine our respect, our obedience, holy obedience, as it's referred to, to the Ten Commandments, to the Great Command. And if we were to reflect, we might discover that some of them we think, well, that doesn't apply to me. How often people have come to confession through the years and say, haven't broken any of the commandments. Well, I take great joy in helping them to understand that yes, myself and them, we all break the commandments daily. So the choices we make. So let's reflect this day on our obedience to the Holy Ten Commandments. And if there's chaos, disruption in your life, but maybe it's because you're not taking seriously one or one part of one of the commandments, or maybe several. May God's Spirit guide and direct us. May the joy that Jesus hopes that we'd all leave here with this morning touch the lives of the people that we meet this day in our words and in our actions. Let us stand and pray. With humility and confidence, you know, I bring before the Lord these are prayers and petitions for ourselves and the whole world. For bishops throughout the world, may the Holy Spirit continue to animate them in their proclamation of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Lord light a pathway for the prudent and just decision making in service of the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle with mental illness, may the Lord surround them with a community of loving care and acceptance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of this community, may the Spirit rejuvenate our faith and strengthen our commitment to the Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may the Lord welcome them with joy into His eternal presence. 
Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. And for those persons whose names are written in our box of petitions, and for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we trust that you always hear us, and we ask that you answer these petitions in accordance with your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in the sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, and in this time of all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. By commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every man and every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew full, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ 
we may be gathered into one of the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gerald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Please join me in our community antiphon. Christ died for all, that those who live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and is risen. Hallelujah.
us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as I said, and you know I don't, not usually on the 8.30 Mass, and so I don't always get to know who our lectors are. We have our lectors here all the year round, but then we have snowbirds, seasonal visitors, who are probably soon to be taking flight again. But thank you so much for volunteering. We appreciate your commitment year after year to volunteer in ministry. And the rest of you are doing nothing. <clears throat> Think about it. If you come all the way down here and want to be involved, and when you live in all of this beautiful job what we experience every day of our lives, and hopefully we'll be willing to give back to the Lord in a joyful manner. The Lord be with you all. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God with joy in our hearts this day. Amen. Amen.